Hello everyone and thanks for watching today's video. Today I'm going to talk about a very common condition. I'm sure most of you would have heard about it. It's called diverticulosis or diverticular disease. It can happen in any part of our digestive system from the back of the throat down to the bottom end which is the colon. As you can see this this is what our say bowel looks like like a tube and it comes out like a little pouch or a pocket out of it. Sometimes we are born with them, like there is a pouch in the back of the throat some people are born with. There can be a pouch in the esophagus some people are born with. In my previous video, I spoke about a little pouch in the small intestine called the Meckel's diverticulum. Again, that is some people born with. But the ones which are most common are in the large colon, in the uh, large intestine, especially on the left hand side of the large intestine so if you touch just below your belly button on the left side uh, above your hip bone on the left side this is the commonest site called the sigmoid colon so i have drawn the picture of the colon over here so this is the right side of our colon so that's our belly button just below our belly button the right side as you know is the appendix so i showed that in my video on the appendicitis this is a small intestine opening into the large intestine, the colon. That's the right colon, that is the going across colon called the transverse colon. We spoke all about this in my previous videos. This is a coming down colon, which is a descending colon. And this is the rectum, which is right at the bottom end before the stools come out of the bottom end. And this bit which goes around on the left side is called the sigmoid colon. It's like a sigma shape, like a comma shaped part of our colon so just below and left on our belly button you can see I've drawn little pouches out of it and this is the commonest place where diverticulosis happens it can happen anywhere in the bowel but this is the commonest place now we might say why is this the commonest place of all the bits the bowel looks the same it's not what the bowel looks like it's what's in the bowel which causes diverticulosis so higher the pressure inside the bowel the more the chance of diverticular disease happening. So when the bowel squeezes, things pushing the food stuff forwards, like in the colon, the poo forwards, when it squeezes, it produces incredible, incredible amount of pressure inside. As you can see, you can squeeze a balloon, it produces pressure. So there are weak spots anywhere in our bowel, whether it's in the back of our throat or the uh, gullet or the small intestine or the large intestine. These weak spots on the lining of the bowel are usually where the muscles are weak. And these are the places usually where the blood vessels are going inside the bowel to supply the lining of the bowel. So little holes through which the blood vessels are going in. So these are and some other spots are inherently weak spots in the bowel. And when the bowel squeezes to push the poo through, or the stools through these little pouches start popping out like little balloons popping out when you squeeze the balloon so that is the reason for it and the reason it is more common on the left side as compared to the right side is because the contents on the right side are very fluidy very liquidy so the pressure the bowel needs to push things through is much less as compared to the left side by the time um, who comes into the left side of the colon most of the water has gone out like a filter gone out of the bowel already and what is left over here is very solid poo and that solid poo makes the pressure inside uh, much higher as compared to the right side of the colon and that's why these pockets are more common on the left side as compared to the right side so logically speaking what causes diverticulosis or diverticular disease anything that will increase the pressure inside the lumen of the bowel will cause more chances of the pockets coming out because of the high pressure inside so if our poo is very hard uh, we don't drink much water and I when I say water I mean water I don't mean just fluids I know many people say that Drinking any fluid is okay, but in my personal view, drinking water is very important because when we drink water, plain water mostly, I'm not saying not to drink other types of fluids, but um, 
predominantly water and I say to my patients that in a nice weather maybe three pints or liter and a half of water is enough in a day. Don't have to drink it in one go, can sip it during the day. That keeps the pressure inside the bowel low because the water, plain water stays in the bowel whereas uh, water which is concentrated like juices, tea, coffee, they all get absorbed and the bowel becomes more dry. When the bowel contents become dry, the pressure is higher. When the pressure is higher, then obviously the pockets will come out more. Same thing, eating lots of fiber because fiber attracts water, pulls the water in, like having Weetabix or, you know, Shreddies or um, All Bran or etc. Or anything with in a fiber like uh, lots of greens, vegetables, fruit, etc. They all have the tendency to keep the water into the inside the bowel. So when the water stays inside the bowel, the contents become softer. When the contents are softer, the stool is softer. With more water in there and more fiber in there, it is easy for the poo to go through and these pockets not to appear or not to become too bad. However, saying that these pockets is aging of the bowel, like we gray our hair with age, like our joints become more arthritic with age, no matter what we do, you know, how well we have looked after our joints, at the age of 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, the bowel becomes older as well. And when the bowel becomes older, these pockets, because it's wear and tear in the bowel, it's aging of the bowel, they will happen in most people. I've seen it in many young people as well, especially in the colon. Obviously, the pockets that people are born with, like in the back of the throat or the gullet or the small intestine, they will be present even at birth. But the vast majority of these diverticulosis, as I said, develop with time, with age, and vast majority will develop over the age of 40 or 50. And as we grow older, more and more will develop. Now, what can happen with these pockets? Sometimes these pockets is like a little pouch coming out. They can trap things like stool or seeds and things like that, and they can get infected. And that condition is called diverticulitis. And these little pockets get very red, inflamed, can get pus inside them and even around them. What else can happen? Vast majority of them, please remember, don't cause any problems other than change of bowel habits. So our bowels fluctuate between diarrhea and constipation. We get too bloated, too windy, um, too much flatulence, foul smelling flatulence because these pockets harbor bacteria and they ferment our food into foul smelling gas. So vast majority of patients will just get change of bowel habits, bloating, distension, flatulence, pellet-like stools, like droppings from a rabbit or something, rabbit-like stools, they are the common symptoms. Occasionally, with the complications, because they are coming out of where the blood vessels are going in, they can inflame the blood vessels and they can bleed uh, quite heavily sometimes. Um, obviously, they can get infected. When they get infected, they can burst because they're very thin wall. And when they burst, either they can patient can get a big abscess around the whole lot of the bowel, and so big pocket of pus can develop around this area or if this pus does not get contained and spread everywhere in the tummy then that is called peritonitis very serious condition to have what is the treatment for diverticulosis so prevention is better than cure so drink tons of water yeah as i said maybe liter and a half every day 1500 cc every day or three pints whatever figures you are used to uh, don't have to drink, the, drink it in one go. I'm not asking you to stop drinking your tea, coffee, etc. Drink that, but in addition, do drink tons of water. But try and avoid seeds. If you have diverticulosis, then try and avoid seeds. Like CD bread, tomatoes, take the seeds out, nuts, etc. Because they don't get digested easily. They go into these pockets and they cause infections. Um, if it has already happened, then drinking tons of water will reduce it from getting worse. If these pockets burst and cause an abscess, then obviously more treatment is required. Antibiotics will be required. If they don't settle down the inflammation of the antibiotics sometime through the skin under scan, they can put a little plastic tube in there, rubber tube, to drain the pus out 
to get rid of the problem. If that does not settle, then many patients will require an operation, which means the infected part of the bowel is removed. In some cases, it can be joined together. In many cases, they'll have to bring out a colostomy or a little bag on the tummy where the poo comes out to get rid of all the infection inside. And once things have settled down in a few weeks or in a few months' time, in many patients, those bags can be put together and the bowel can be put together and the bag could be get, gotten rid of. So that is what diverticulosis or diverticular disease and diverticulitis is and what is the treatment of it. I hope you found this video informative. If you like my video, then please remember to subscribe and I'll see you very, very soon. Thanks for watching.